friends welcome back to my channel today i have a new video for you guys this is something that i've been thinking about a lot recently and i figured i'd make a video on it just to see how you guys feel about this if it's something that you can relate to if i'm not alone in this because this is something that i've felt for a while now so the video i don't know what i'm gonna call it yet but something along the lines of why is dating so difficult when you're spiritually awakened what is it about the spiritual awakening process that makes it so difficult to find someone or to want to find someone or to want or like anyone that you cross paths with? I found that when I started dating um, as someone who was awakened, it was really difficult. I didn't experience it as much as I have in the past year. So pretty much, I'll give you a rundown. As you guys know, I was on and off with my ex. Um, and the moments that we were off, prior to the relationship, I wasn't awakened. But every time we broke up, I would enter like a new level of spiritual awakening. And in between those breaks, I would maybe go on one or two dates. And it was so difficult. Or people would talk to me and it was so difficult to want anybody. It didn't really have to do with my ex. It had more to do with like, I just didn't want anybody. But now that I've been single for a year, yes, a year. I know, crazy. I have had a lot more experience dating in this past year. I started seeing people like casually going on dates. Oh my God, like summertime, May, June. Um, and uh, it was just so hard to like want anybody. And again, this has nothing to do with my previous relationship. This has everything to do with the fact that I am now spiritually awakened. And I just feel like A, no one's good enough for me. B, no one is deserving of my time. And C, no one is worth my spiritual energy and my aura. I just truly believe that. I, sorry, I don't believe that. I don't believe that no one is worth it. No one I had come across really was worth it. And if they were, I didn't want them. Like I didn't, they weren't my type or I wasn't interested or I wasn't attracted to them, things like that. Like there have been great people that have come across that are worth my energy and my time and whatever, but I just like, they're not my type, you know, or I just, mm, we're not, we're not clicking. We don't have chemistry. So except for one. Yeah. Like I found that it had a lot to do with my spiritual journey and I want to talk about that. So if you're like me, you've probably found that when you became awakened, um, which by the way, like we're all spiritual beings, we're all born spiritual beings and we are all awakened to an extent. However, when we make the choice for ourselves to embark on an intentional spiritual journey and we go through an awakening process, things are different. Things are very different. You see the world differently. Suddenly your intuition has opened up. Your energy is more open, um, but slightly more reserved. Uh, it's, it's a different feeling. You don't have time for the things you used to have time for because you're aware of how precious your energy and your time is, things kind of change. So anyways, once you're awakened, if you're like me, you will find that when you're dating people casually, it feels very boring. It feels very pointless. It feels very shallow unless it's like a deep soul connection. As a spiritually awakened being, you're so in tune with yourself and your divine connection that if you're meeting someone who's like not a twin flame, a karmic or a soulmate, you're bored as hell. You are bored as hell. It is, oh my God, it's, it's so boring to date. Like every time I go on a date, I just feel like, yeah, you're nice. You're tall, you're handsome, you're cool, you're lovely, great job, you know, sweet guy. But I just don't feel that pull. And if you're not familiar with that pull, you are lucky because that means you have nothing to compare it to. So um, maybe it's not boring for you yet. But once you are truly enlightened, you will find or meet or cross paths with some type of um, soul connection. And once you do that, anything less than that is not enough for you you will find yourself chasing toxic soul connections solely because the soul connection is so intense that you're chasing it but it's toxic and that goes against your self-love which is a whole other story but what i'm trying to say is i'll give an example um i've met a soulmate i've met a karmic and i've met a twin flame and i can tell the difference i can tell the difference in the early days i can't 
they all feel the same. But um, if you're curious, I do have a video on Twin Flames. It's really good. I'm really proud of that video. And I do have a video on Karmix and on Soulmates coming out too. So anyways, I have met all three of those types of connections. So when I meet somebody that I'm like really compatible with and there's a lot of chemistry, I'm just like waiting for that click. I'm waiting for that soul connection to kind of happen, but it's usually instant. So I'm kind of waiting for something that's not going to happen. And as great as it is, I just don't feel fulfilled enough to like truly feel like that's the person for me. I just always kind of feel like there's something missing. And it sucks because sometimes I'll be like, this person is so perfect. What's wrong with them? But it just feels like there's something missing. I know what it's like to meet a twin flame and soulmate. And I want that. I want that. I did the inner work to become enlightened and awakened and I'm still on my journey. Don't get me wrong. It's a lifelong journey. We are never done with our spiritual journey. Um, I've done the work to be able to feel it and acknowledge it and recognize when it's a soul connection. So I feel like I don't want anything less than that. The problem is there's not that many of those connections out there on earth for us. And that's what sucks. That's what sucks. So yeah, I find that like being spiritual ever since I became like a super spiritual person, it's just been so hard for me to date. It's been so hard for me to date. I don't like to say that, sorry. I'm like affirming it and, and um, and manifesting that by saying that. I don't want to do that. So spirit guides, don't take my word seriously right now, please. But what I'm trying to say is like, as I became spiritual, it just, it got harder and harder because every conversation I had with people just felt very shallow and surface level. Every connection I made just felt super dull and I just didn't like it. Like when I met my twin flame, it was so magnetic. It was so like electric and so purposeful and so aligned and it was just like a mirror you know it was such a deep connection that like after that date every other date felt boring and i was like oh, like where is that spark like where is it you know and it got really difficult it got really difficult because i was going on dates and like the dates were going well with other people you know and then like i was just in the back of my mind i was like ah, it's not the same something's missing it's like it's like when you're cooking a meal and you're missing the key like flavor component like let's say you're making uh, I don't know fucking panela vodka or something and you're missing garlic or you're missing basil yeah it's good it's a really good panela vodka it's great actually delicious but with some basil or with some garlic it would be next level and it's just not the same without the basil or the garlic you need that basil and garlic for it to really hit, you know? For you to really be like, ah, that was a really great penne la vodka. You need it, but you just don't have it. And yeah, you can appreciate this bowl, but you still want another bowl with the chili, with the chili, what? <laughs> with, with, with the basil and the garlic. It's just that, like you just, you just need that, you know? So yeah, my dates go great. I go home and I'm like, mm -hmm, lovely, mm -hmm. I'll go to another one, I'll go to another one. I'm just waiting for that moment where I'm like, yes, I mean, it, do it doesn't come. So I just stopped going on some dates because I found that like, I, first of all, no one's asking me anymore, but I found that because I felt something missing, I wasn't able to reciprocate the energy they were giving me. So for example, they're texting me, they're calling me and I'm just like not giving much. I'm like taking seven hours, two days to reply. I'm not answering, they ask me out again, I'm busy, blah, 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 you know, like coming up with excuses with different people and um, I don't really give it that full shot because I don't want to leave people on because like I could be like, okay, by date five, maybe I'll feel it. I'm waiting for something that's not going to happen because it's always instant with me when it's that soul connection. I'm waiting for something that's not going to happen, but in that four to five date time span, maybe they're like starting to really like me or maybe they're really seeing like potential in me and that's not fair so yeah maybe I'm not giving people a full chance and it's unfortunate maybe I'm chasing something that might not really exist in Canada for me or right now or for the next 10 years I don't know but that's why I believe that it's hard to date as a spiritual person because you are so in tune with yourself that you know you're craving this soul connection and soul connections are not just like waiting for you outside your front door like you have to go through deep healing to be ready for that connection or maybe that connection is what is triggering the deep healing for you and you need to be at that point in your life where you're ready for it and you're not always ready for it so it's not gonna happen every day so that's one part of dating 
um, being difficult when you become like super spiritual and stuff. The other part is what comes with working on your self-love. So when you work on your self-love and you really start to, you know, love who you are inside and out, you set a lot of, um, like put a lot of walls up and you set a lot of boundaries really early and you spot red flags early and it's a great thing. It's a great thing to love yourself enough to know what's right and what's wrong for you off the jump. Like that's a great thing. I went on one date with someone and he had so many red flags, bro. Like he was talking about how, oh, I don't want to put him on blast. Ah, what if he watches this? Whatever. He was talking about, you know, women's body counts and his opinion on that. He was talking like terribly about his ex using like words to describe her that I just didn't think was okay. He was asking me inappropriate questions. He was um, saying that he was testing me on something. Like things like that, I wouldn't have noticed when I didn't love myself. Like I would have just thought it was funny, conversation, debate, you know, like. I wouldn't have really taken it in, which sounds silly because it's like, it's obvious actually, like it's a big red flag. However, I didn't see those things because I didn't love myself enough. I was just like, oh, he's just like joking around. Oh, he's just this. We're just having a debate. Now I'm like, I can have the conversation. I can debate, but I'll go home and be like, I'm not seeing you again. That was a red flag. That was another. So yeah, once you're on the self-love journey, you see everything. You get really protective over your energy, over your time, and I don't know. Um, also, quick side note, if you don't love yourself and you don't spot the red flags and you don't know how to set boundaries and you need to work on your internal self-love, I got you, girl, or boy, or person, or human, or whoever, or alien, or dog, or cat. I have the self-love manifesto. I don't know if you can see it, but this is it. Oh, fuck, you can't see it, can you? This is the self-love manifesto. It's a workbook that I created. It is something I'm so proud of. It's literally a guided workbook with 30 pages of quizzes, tests, um, reflections, journal prompts, affirmations, just like wisdom, fill in the blanks, worksheet. It's really cool. If you complete this workbook and you, you, and you use it the way it's meant to be used, I'm telling you, you will see big changes in your life. It's only 13 bucks. It's on my website. It's linked down below. I created it from cover to back and I'm so proud of it. It took me forever, but I'm so proud of it. It's pretty affordable and it is a digital file so you receive it instantly and then you can just print it off. So it's great. So yeah, if you don't love yourself, do this, but actually use it properly. Don't just like daddy 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 fill it out because you're bored. Like use it. I'm telling you, you will see a change in your life. Okay, anyways, once you finish that workbook and you love yourself, you'll probably go through what I'm going through, which is like, I'm so protective of my peace and my solitude. I don't want to spend time with you because I prefer spending time with myself. And it takes a certain type of person for me to want to actually like see you often and enjoy your company. And I'm talking dating, like friends, I'll see them whenever. But when it comes to me dating, it's like, I don't want to date you just to date you. Part of me is like, I should, I should have fun. You know, I should continue to go on dates, but something about it just feels so like, hollow you know i like the thought of like you know hot girl summer go on dates blah 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 but then it's like i kind of feel unfulfilled i don't know i'm gonna try it again in the summer see how i feel but when you love yourself you just get really protective over your peace and um you know you just meet people and you're like you're not worth my time i could be doing so many things why am i spending it with you and that doesn't mean i think i'm better than anybody at all it just means that we're not aligned and we're not compatible, so why would I bother investing my time into you and allow you to invest your time into me when I know this isn't going anywhere? I didn't used to do that. I used to give it three, four, five dates, a bunch of chances to figure it out. Now I kind of just know between one to three dates. I know like, mm -mm. usually if I'm being honest, I know within one date because I ask the important questions. So yeah, the self-love aspect of healing and spirituality makes it even more difficult. Sometimes I miss the days when I was not awakened, self-aware or spiritual or, um, you know, had that self-love. I miss those days sometimes because life was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I would give anyone the time of day. I would date anybody. I didn't have that many people knocking on my door, but I would have given them the chance if they did. Like, it was so easy and I miss that. Like, that's how I ended up in the relationship I ended up in because I didn't love myself and I tolerated behaviors 
that I shouldn't have and I ignored red flags that I shouldn't have ignored because I wasn't awakened and I didn't have that self-love so I say this like it's a bad thing it's kind of like a rant almost or like I don't even know what this video is it's just like to whoever understands maybe they'll feel heard maybe they'll feel seen by watching this I just know that it's not a bad thing to live life this way and to filter out the bad but it can get kind of lonely and kind of tiring because you're like I just want to like have a soul connection but you don't or you're just like I just want to date I want to go on dates for fun but you don't enjoy it so then you just kind of end up sitting in your room watching The Bachelor and crying over whatever because you're like mm, I'll live vicariously through them that's my take on this that's why I believe it's hard to date when you become a spiritual baddie I don't think it's impossible I just think it's a little more difficult but the thing is the connections that we make and the people that we choose to allow into our life they're meaningful and that's a beautiful thing that's a beautiful thing so at least we have that so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video once again if you're interested in the self-love manifesto check out my uh website or my etsy it's available on both same price and it's a digital download that's available to you instantly so yeah you can use it whenever i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any topics you want to hear me talk about make sure to comment them down below like the video if you want to help me out with my engagement subscribe if you're new and with that being said thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one Bye.